Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar, The Cost of Marijuana in the Workplace. This is a hot topic right now, and I know many companies are considering rethinking their drug policies around marijuana. We are glad to have industry expert Lucas Shaw to shed some more light on this topic. In this webinar, we will be covering what the current political environment is around marijuana, how it affects your body, what are the benefits of a drug testing program, and discuss what can or should companies do today in the workplace regarding marijuana. I'm Luke Kibbe. I'm your moderator today. Before we get started though, I wanted to cover a couple housekeeping items. This webinar is interactive, so please use the chat box to submit your questions or answer our two poll questions in the presentation. I will be monitoring the questions and we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar to go over them. Also, we will mute all phones as there's a lot of static with many people on the line. So again, please use the chat box for if you have any questions. And finally, you will receive the recording of this webinar as well as the slides after it is over. So keep an eye on your email tomorrow. With that, let's get started. I'm excited to introduce Lucas Shaw. Welcome and take it away. Uh, I just want to uh, thank uh, thank Lucas and uh, thank you guys for your time uh, and coming in today to discuss this uh, very important subject. Um, I know that uh, especially in Oregon, we've been thinking a lot about that lately. Uh, this lately, with uh, legalization of uh, of marijuana for recreational use. Um, and uh, it's been uh, hotly contested uh, whether the current administration and the Justice Department will be more lenient or uh, go away from some of the previous administrations, the Obama administration's directives regarding marijuana. So there's a, there's a whole lot we're going to cover today. Um, I want to stress the fact um, that a lot of this is going to be informative. Um, but the, the focus of this really um, is about thinking what's going to be best for your company. Um, so some major questions we really are going to cover um, uh, is we've been noticing within our company a, a kind of disturbing trend of companies deciding to remove marijuana from their drug testing panel um, for pre-employments and randoms. Um, now, for those of you that are involved uh, under the authority of the uh, Federal Motor Carriers uh, Administration or uh, the Department of Transportation know that that's not possible, um, but for those that don't have that requirement, there has been a, a small push for that, and we'll just kind of go over the pros and cons of that. Um, what uh, we really also want to go over what happened to the states where marijuana has been legalized, um, the effects over the body, um, how drug testing can benefit uh, your company if you're not already doing it, um, kind of go over some case law regarding marijuana, and uh, just kind of go over what companies can uh, make adjustments for today. Um, the first poll question um, that uh, Kibby is really going to uh, want to know from you guys is uh, is your company currently testing for marijuana in any capacity for any position um, especially dealing with the Department of Transportation this focuses on safety sensitive functions um, but for those not under that authority uh, there are some benefits to testing your employees for marijuana and we'll go over those internally so if you want to use that chat box it's kind of answer that poll question for Kibby, that'd be great. So, if you're thinking about dropping marijuana when, uh, from your testing, basically from your, from your testing panel. Some things to consider. Um, this is a pretty good breakdown of the state of marijuana legalization in the United States, uh, but this map is slightly incomplete. Um, so I've got some specific statistics to go with this. Um, currently in the United States, there are five states that have complete prohibition over marijuana and cannabis. Um, there is one state that has only decriminalized possession 
Um, and in that state's case, they have decriminalized it for the first offense only. Um, there are 13 states that have legalized uh, cannabidiol oils. Um, this is specifically for children with seizures. Um, most of those states are located in the South and the Midwest, um, and that is only after the recommendation from a doctor. Um, there are 10 states that have legalized medical marijuana. There are 14 states that have legalized mar medical marijuana and decriminalized the possession of marijuana. And there are seven states, including the, uh, uh, and as well as um, the District of Columbia, where marijuana is outright legal. So, um, there, I mean, almost the entire country, <laughs> the majority of the country, operates and lives in places where on some level, cannabis and marijuana are legal. Um, what I like about this graphic here, though, is that it really kind of illustrates um, where these are located. Um, as you can see, the West Coast is among the most progressive in this in this fashion. Um, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, all completely legalized. Um, and of the four states that are operating with retail stores, that's Washington, Oregon, California, and Colorado. Um, the, the most important thing when you're thinking about removing marijuana from your panel is that it it's, it's still a Schedule One drug. It, it, it still um, has a very high potential for abuse and has a potential to create severe psychological and physical dependencies. Um, as far back as August 2016, um, under the previous administration, the Health and Human Services evaluation uh, was very clear that there is no currently accepted medical use, um, mainly because the, there's no there hasn't been adequate research and determination uh, the chemistry's effect, the, the drug's chemistry's effect, um, and there, there just isn't enough evidence widely available. Um, there's no consensus among the data that is available, um, and it, 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 the DEA has concluded the known risk of marijuana use have not been shown to outweigh specific benefits in a well-controlled clinical trial that scientifically evaluate safety and efficacy. So even though there are, as, as I said, there's seven states that have it outright legalized, um, and there are 29 states that have legal, either complete, uh, ended, have completely ended prohibition or have medical purposes, um, it's still, the federal government still sees it as a, an illegal substance. Um, so what has been the effect of legalization? Um, the positivity for uh, Washington, Colorado went up about 20%. Um, both of these states have recreational marijuana use. Uh, Washington saw an increase in fatal crashes involving marijuana. Um, there has um, been, as marijuana is the most abused drug, not just in the United States, but worldwide, um, nearly a quarter of drug treatment admissions are for marijuana, and half of those admissions are for people under the age of 18, um, which is very, very concerning to think about. Uh, in terms of Oregon's timeline, um, 2015 is when they allowed medical dispensaries to begin selling limited amounts of marijuana uh, for people without medical cards. Um, by January, when retail stores had started to show their heads, uh, marijuana use really went on the rise, specifically among uh, young male adults. Uh, it's actually doubled uh, while the rest of the country has seen, although a significant increase in use not nearly as significant as Oregon. Um, nearly 10% of Oregonians admit to using the drug. Um, that is again a much higher percentage among uh, 
26 to 35 year old males. Um, three in four adults know that driving under the influence of marijuana increases the risk of a crash. But nearly two thirds say they don't know at what point after consuming the drug it's okay to drive. Um, the OLCC started issuing licenses uh, later on. And if you observe the graphic, you can really see the spike in uh, t from between 2013 and 2015, where there was an increase in applications for medical cards and medical card holders of almost uh, just over 20,000 <coughs> more people have applied for it. So it's definitely become more widely acceptable in Oregon. Um, touched on this a little bit, but this is that report uh, about fatal crash increases in Washington, and this is from the AAA Foundation. The significant increases in fatal crashes involving marijuana is alarming. Um, and I, I think it, they're very right to say that it's a very interesting case study for other states understanding how they're going to be dealing with this. Um, treatment facility in Coburg, Oregon has uh, seen significant increases in patients coming in. Um, uh, and what's been troubling is the analysis of previous studies was based on lower THC concentration, uh, which is not as much the case now. Um, there was also a significant increase in uh, calls related to marijuana to the Oregon Poison Center. Uh, in the six month span, 200 calls. And the entire year previously, 158. So on pace to more than double the amount of calls for the year. Um, uh, September, uh, got first kind of idea of the number of medical marijuana dispensaries um, that are selling recreational marijuana. Um, 380, 148 in the Portland metro area. Um, by comparison, um, the OLCC also, as part of it, is over is, is the Liquor Commission. In the state of Oregon, there are 252 liquor stores, and 71 of those are in the Portland metro area. So about 50% more medical dispensaries uh, are dispensaries to get marijuana than there are places to buy alcohol, and double the amount of places in the Portland metro area. I find that to be a fairly interesting statistic. Um, the first health alert goes out in Oregon uh, about winter 2016. Um, the Oregon is one of the first states to really do the seed to sale idea where they follow the, the sale of the seed where it grows stuff like that, and they track it. Um, so from it's being bought as a seed planted to being sold at the market, um, and they found that there were people who, um, who bought and consumed marijuana products um, that were contaminated. Um, and because of the pesticide, the, the changes to the pesticide, they caused a major spike in prices uh, as the amounts, basically the supply went down because of the new regulations, but the demand remained the same. Um, ultimately, the state is looking to separate medical dispensaries from recreational. Um, I, I think that's further on down the line. Uh, I don't know if you guys have Heard recently, but Oregon also issued its first outright um, recall of marijuana. Um, they identified a a plant that was sold outside of Eugene to, uh, at a dispensary um, that had uh, that was contaminated with a pesticide, and they have identified at least 30 people that purchased it, and they're attempting now to recollect it. They're asking those people to come in um, to avoid the, the uh, medical consequences of consumption. Um, 
So the, uh, the National Academics did a report, um, the health effects of cannabis and cannabinoids. Um, and again, I, I just want to be very clear that this study had a lot of came to a lot of conclusions, but probably the most overarching and the most clear of them was that more study is necessary. Um, more than anything else, there needs to be more money spent on finding out the health benefits, discovering which types of products have the most benefits, which ones have the least amount of benefits, um, and creating um, environments where information and tests are both replicable, rec replip oh my gosh, replicable, and where the data is consistent. Um, so we need to uh, make sure that um, we, when we're looking at these results, we're acknowledging the fact that more really does need to be done. So, um, of this report, which spans 20 years worth of research and scientific study, uh, they did find substantial evidence between cannabis use and the increased risk of motor vehicle crashes. Not that big of a surprise. Um, but of another part of that is they found a fairly good evidence to indicate uh, that cannabis use increases the risk of overdose injur injuries among pediatric populations. Um, there is also some fairly moderate evidence to indicate um, that uh, marijuana use, especially acute uh, marijuana use um, has serious effects on the brain. Um, it can impair learning, memory, and attention. Um, there was a college study that found that students, uh, about 41% of the, of the students that were involved in the study, uh, were unable to remember what they had read if they had con if they were consuming marijuana or had consumed marijuana right before reading it. So um, there's, there, there's some very devastating mental effects. Um, there's some fairly moderate evidence as well um, around uh, major depressive disorder uh, as a risk, risk factor um, that can lead to more uh, use of other types of drugs or increase from acute use to problem use. Um, there's also some fairly moderate evidence um, that uh, substance abuse uh, can stem from using marijuana, including alcohol, tobacco, and other illicit drugs. Um, in a fair amount of the research that was done, uh, especially research done on cancer, um, a lot of these a lot of these assumptions were very difficult because with n about 97% of those who they studied, those that use marijuana also smoke cigarettes. So there's a little bit of, uh, of crossover there that is still, again, needs to be understood from, from further research. Um, THC, uh, which is the main, uh, the main active ingredient in marijuana, it, it impairs your judgment. It alters the way you process information. Uh, judgment skills uh, can be off. Uh, distorts sense of time. Um, can result in intense anxiety, panic attacks, and paranoia. Um, like I mentioned, the study before, the same study found that um, uh, students even had difficulty remembering a conversation and what it was about by the time it ended, almost 60% of them. Um, uh, it, marijuana does, the reason that people that use it get that high is it's, it's triggering a release of dopamine. Um, and probably this is one of the most scary parts about marijuana use, especially in regards to operating 
safety sensitive functions is that it, it slows down your reaction time. You know, um, it can affect your balance and coordination. Uh, reflexes are much slower. Um, and the risk of an accident uh, while operating a CMV more than doubles. So, um, does direct testing actually have a benefit? The answer is ye eh, relatively yes. So, these are some of the issues that come up with specifically drug abuse, but as marijuana is one of the most abused drugs out there, um, marijuana is definitely involved in the majority of these. 65% uh, of accidents on the job are related to misuse of drugs or alcohol. 40% of all industrial fatalities are caused by substance abusers. Um, 10 to 20% of the nation's workers who die at work test positive for drugs or alcohol. Substance abusers are much more likely to be involved in accidents and five times more likely to hurt themselves at work. Um, they're significantly less productive. Um, they double the cost of workers' comps claims for employers. And drug abusers are up to twice as many, uh, uses twice as many medical benefits. Uh, there's a case of an instance um, in Germany uh, earlier this month um, BMW plant had two workers, one was drunk, one was high, um, they both smoked marijuana before going to their shift and caused over a million dollars worth of uh, lost revenue for BMW because they basically fell asleep on the job. So there's a lot of negatives that can occur if your employees are under the use of illegal substances. Um, there's a lot of numbers here. I really want to focus on the fact that uh, drug abuse in Oregon has directly resulted in $2 billion lost from substance abuses. Um, there have been medical costs have gone up about $506 million. Um, and we're seeing an increase as well of automobile crashes and paying for that, uh, 271 million. So a lot of numbers to digest there, um, but it, it, it costs money for people to, to have uh, drug problems. Um, if you kind of break it down by industry, um, ones that, you know, are more, under the control of, uh, of government authorities, construction, extraction, installation, maintenance, repair, transportation, um, even though they're up there, they're not the, some of the highest. Uh, you look at the top three, um, food preparation and serving, it leads the way, um, followed closely by construction, extraction, um, and not that far behind is sales and related occupations. So no matter what type of industry you're in, you are going to have people that are using illicit substances. Um, though it, there are stronger correlations to different industries, um, as you can see, it, it, it affects all industries um, in, a, in, a, in a significant way. Uh, really, uh, finding the number of, in manufacturing, almost 5,000 fatal occupational injuries. Um, and then uh, in, in healthcare, you've got uh, uh, most, uh, at least 15% um, of physicians and nurses will experience substance abuse issues at some point during their career. Now, again, this, this may not necessarily be marijuana. In a lot of cases, this has more to do with opiates. But drug abuse is a problem. And if you're not able to uh, properly identify the problem employees, you're putting yourself at risk. Um, another study... Um, basically going over some of the effects of what drug testing can do. Um, they found a reduction in insurance claims, uh, reduction in injury reports and accidents by 51% by introducing drug testing. Um, had workers' comp incidences decreased by half. 
um, 20% increases in productivity, uh, almost 20% decrease in turnover rates, um, absenteeism went down, um, or I'm sorry, that specifically in absenteeism where they had problems of more than 15% implementing drug testing drops by 50%. So there are a lot of benefits to testing, you know. You're gonna have your workers are going to be on the job and working more, and you're going to have to worry a lot less about them leaving the job or, you know, causing accidents on the job. Um, so in terms of testing, um, there is already a pretty good precedent for testing even though you may operate in a state that has legal medical or recreational marijuana. Um, the case of Michael Swab versus Safeway, um, Mr. Swab was terminated uh, after it was identified that at work uh, he tested positive um, for medical uh, for marijuana for which he had a medical card. Um, he this, he sued Safeway for wrongful termination um, and compared it specifically to. Um, the punishment of employees that he had witnessed who had been actually intoxicated with alcohol at work. Um, but Safeway had a drug and alcohol policy that focused on drug-free and prohibited testing positive for controlled substance on the job or on company pre uh, premises. And the court ruled in favor um, uh, because it's still a, even though it, at that point, uh, Mr. Swa had the right to consume it in the state of Washington. The policy for Safeway was a nationwide policy and was very clear that they need to be drug free. And because it's still Schedule One controlled substance and illegal under federal law, they had totally had the right to deny um, uh, to uh, terminate him. Um, so when you're thinking about small businesses, uh, your small business or your company thinking about you know contracts that you may be awarded or contracts that you want to apply for in, in certain in instances um, you may be putting your business at risk so uh, it, it's 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 important to think about how you want to grow your business as well if you want to get involved with uh, with certain companies that may require that they may require um, testing um, and to be compliant with uh, compliant with the federal government it's, it's, it's very important that you have that in place um, and you have that already in your policy so now knowing the risks of marijuana in the workplace and the benefits of testing will as a company if you said no before then no you're not testing have you maybe reconsidered that just if you, if you want to use that chat box to answer that question for just for Lucas so he can have an idea of, uh, of, of what's going on in your minds. Um, so when you're thinking about policies, here's the thing you, that you really need to consider. Um, is your drug testing policy still relevant? Um, if in some cases, you may have a policy that uh, that still includes like quaaludes or you know other drugs that are not out there um, in a in a very commercial and and uh, effective way anymore. So uh, take a look at your drug and alcohol policy and make sure that um, the types of drugs that you're included in there are still out there. Um, do you have a do you have positions um, that require either s either safety sensitive functions or that require high attention to detail? You know, that's a that's an important aspect to think about. Um, if you're dealing with someone that's under the influence of drugs or alcohol, you may not have a safety sensitive function, but you may have some very high detail some important things that have important details that can't be missed and if you have employees that 
are under the influence of drugs or alcohol, then you're putting yourself and your company at risk. Um, is making sure that your policy is clear about uh, the type of behavior, what's acceptable, what's unacceptable, um, and then what, what's the repercussions for violating that policy. Um, uh, if you're you know, getting ready for preparation to <laughs> dealing with maybe you have a tenured employee that tests positive, are you prepared to follow through with what you say the consequences are? And if your policy is that you are have a drug-free environment, does it make it clear that, that, that you can terminate that person immediately? Or if you can try to correct the behavior, if there's alternative, uh, alternative discipline, um, or if, if your company in the process of, of keeping that employee will support them through treatment and recovery. So very important things to consider when you're reviewing um, your drug and alcohol policy. Um, and, you know, think about ways you can, you can protect your company as well. Um, are you doing random on-site testing? Um, you know, the, if, you're, if you're a DOT company, FMCSA company, you don't really have any options in terms of how you test, but if you're not under that authority, you know, there are other ways as well. You can use uh, uh, oral swabs, um, use hair testing as well um, to get a, kind of like a bigger picture of your employee's uh, substance abuse. Um, you know, when's the last time that um, your supervisors and managers uh, went over identifying if an employee is under the influence of drugs or alcohol? And then what steps that that manager needs to take in terms of either getting that person tested, removing that person from safety functions, how that needs to be documented to avoid legal repercussions. Um, and have you, if you don't have, uh, don't have it already, have you considered, you know, being part of a drug testing pool? Um, there's definitely things uh, on our side that we can help out. Um, we have a, a team of people that are um, very knowledgeable uh, of things, you know, regarding the Department of Transportation, drug testing, um, things you need to look out for, and we can help set up your managers as well as uh, as your supervisors uh, with getting reasonable suspicion training. And um, our information, I'm sure you've seen throughout. My email is included um, here at the end as well. Um, I think we're going to open it up for some questions and. Uh, yeah, just make sure you use the chat box, and uh, Kibby will start fielding those now. Thanks again, Lucas, for chatting on this subject. Um, at this point, uh, like Lucas said, we're going to move on to the Q&A session. We uh, don't have any questions yet, so if you have any questions, please feel free to type it in the uh, question box. We will uh, wait a couple minutes to see if anybody has any questions. Um, I know uh, one topic uh, that I, I wanted to bring up uh, as we wait for questions. Um, it's interesting in the in the construction industry. OSHA said, um, you know, back in 2015 that there was 4,379 worker fatalities in the uh, private industry, and of those, 937 or 21.4 percent were in the construction industry, and that's basically one in five worker deaths last year, uh, or in 2015, were in the construction industry. Uh, also, a report by AON said that 40% of construction fatalities involved substance abuse. And if you look at that number based on the fatalities in 2015, one can uh, assume that there was 375 deaths in the construction industry likely contributed by substance abuse. And again, marijuana is going to be one of the main culprits in this. Um, and that's basically more than one death a day in the construction industry involving substance abusers. Now, imagine the dollar costs to the situation. Uh, think of the size of various companies. Think about your own costs. Uh, work, I mean, especially when it comes to your company's costs, like worker comp claims. You know, with drug testing, it fell as much as 50%. Insurance claims reduced by 12%. Uh, 
reduced amount of accidents by 50%, nearly 20% uptick in productivity. And if, the, if you have absenteeism as a big issue, it could reduce it as much as 50%. If you're already testing for marijuana, as many businesses are, don't lose those benefits by taking it out of your drug testing policy. Also, even just tweaking your drug testing policy uh, on a better way to, to manage your employees and making sure you're still legal with the, with the laws and you know, making sure your company's still safe, um, it could help you in all of those areas to some degree. And we just want to be able to as clean fleet help you in the right direction if needed. So I know uh, one person asked if we can get a copy of this somewhere. Yes, we're going to have the copy of the recording of this presentation, um, as well as the slides going to be sent out uh, to everybody. So that uh, will be sent to you tomorrow, probably around lunchtime is when I'll have the, uh, the video recording of it done. So uh, that's going to be sent to you guys. Uh, if there's no other questions on the subject here, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, conclude. Before we wrap up, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know about another uh, webinar that's coming up. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Next month is going to be diving into the details of what is oral saliva testing and why should you care. So uh, feel free to go online, cleanfleet.org backslash monthly webinar. I'll also send the, the link out to you guys in that email. So thanks again for, for attending, everybody. Um, I think it was a good conversation, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next month. And uh, we'll conclude this uh, webinar. Thank you.